So guys, here I am, it's Randy Babel here. I'm the curator of the Gallery 10 downtown Sevierville. I am very fortunate to have the lovely lady, Crystal Sharp, who actually did this fantastic mural behind me here. And she actually is one of the, uh, I won't say the instigators, but she put this seed in my head about making this entire place into a gallery in addition to my real estate office here. Because I guess if you can't find art for your walls, you can find wall for your art. So I guess it all ties in something together like that. But Crystal, first off, uh, you know, welcome. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you for being a part of it and really for being an inspiration, I really think, in relation to the gallery, which is fantastic. <laughs> Bless you! Thank you. <laughs> so thank, thank you for being a part of the gallery and making it all happen here. Um, but tell me now, the process with the mural, because first off, you know, the mural. I mean, we, we, you know, I came to you, I said, Crystal, I need a mural. You're, at the time, head of the Severe World Commons um, Arts, Arts Council, Arts Council. Mm -hmm. um, and you're my go-to. I see some to, to do a mural, and you put your hand up and says, I can do it. So tell me about the process of the actual mural itself. Yes, so you wanted to um, give a little bit of a, uh, a ride through the area that we live in, which is, uh, which is the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. And um, what I wanted to do was start at Route 40 down here and kind of Lolly day long until we got to a six, uh, well down 66 to the parkway and then on down to Gatlinburg and I wanted to be able to show that uh, there are wonderful places to stop along the way and, and I really like the process because I, I gave you a free reign so listen I want this mural this is my idea in my head I want to show this thing down there here's a map so if somebody comes in to find out what's where where their house is going to be or whether they want to know where to go in Sevier County that there's a point of reference map, not really to scale, but something that's artistic that's here. Yeah. And I know your process is a bit different because we just said David Freeman, if you saw that interview, make sure, if you haven't, make sure you take a look on the website. Um, but his process was he drew the whole thing out you know, when he did his Jefferson City mural. Mm -hmm. um, and then he actually did basically redrew that. But the process we had here was different. We mm -hmm. just basically said, okay, this is what we want. Off you yeah. go, the way you went, which was very cool. I really like that. Yeah. It, it really so what I did is I started with the road, and I kind of portrayed that in a way that uh, would be able to take us along, and I could put above and below the different places that we see every day as we go down these roads. And they're kind of like, um, they're iconic in a way because there are a lot of venues that people stop at and recognize immediately. So I came up with a little character for each one of those, painted them up and put them on, starting with the road to the characters. Then I wanted to be able to portray the mountains on the top so that we wouldn't have an empty space and the lovely flowers and grasses that we have here in Tennessee. And those are actually native flowers. Yes, there are, there are wild native flowers, flowers here in Tennessee. Yeah, so that's something you can do without looking at the name, see if you can pick out what the actual flowers is, because like me, I'm, I'm terrible with that, and I couldn't do it. And another thing too is actually come and take a look at the icons along the road, and see if without looking at your name, you can guess what they are and where they're at. Because I know up here in the south, with the big jumping bass that we had at the top, it took me like, what the heck is that giant jumping fish? And then finally, you know, bass pro shot. Yeah, there it was. And we have a lot of fishing here, so that yeah, that, that takes you all the way from the fit from the jumping fish down here down to Trout House down in Gatlinburg and the fishing along the way on the spur. So we kind of meander along with all these little characters, and some of them are humorous, and yeah. some of them are a little more uh, detailed. That was very cool. Now tell me about so we have some of your other bits of art here, and your art really is quite unique in relation. It's not just painting; you use some fabric and texture. And it really, I've never seen anything that really shows motion within a, a piece of art, like a couple of your pieces there. Tell me about those pieces. Yes, I have a variety of um, techniques that I use and de have developed to show a bit of uh, movement in the atmosphere. And the way I do that is uh, I paint in acrylic and also in watercolor and I can use other medias, but uh, so right now I'm working a lot in acrylic. So the uh, sculpted pole canvases are actually manipulated in a way that the canvas is pulled and stretched across the um, 
across the stretcher bars and stapled in a way that shows some movement in the air. So I try to portray that. That's, that I think comes from a long life of being in beautiful surroundings and just seeing a lot of beautiful areas like the mountains and the seas. I grew up in the Bahamas, in Freeport, Grand Bahama, and I think a lot of the colors come from there, even with the mountainscapes. The mountainscapes and the seascapes, um, I really try to portray a lot of movement in the atmosphere because it just doesn't stay static. You know, we see it as static, but it really isn't. So, you, so if you're up in the Bahamas, do you have a little bit of a, that's okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, is there any Bob Marley influence to your art? <laughs> I don't know if that's you know that the case, but that's the music I listen Jamaica to. I do listen to the I do yeah. listen to reggae a lot. Yes, it's yeah. uh, music is really a big part of my creative process, and that uh, that definitely that would be one of the artists I'd be listening to when I'm making art. Okay, now uh, tell me, are there any other styles of art that you really do? Is there one style of art that you prefer over another style of art? Is there um, well, I work in, when I work in watercolors, I like to explore. So I do a lot of wet and wet. I do a lot of things that naturally occur. So if you add water to the paper, the pigment will flow. And that's something that I do a lot of. If you add salt, it will disperse the pigment and the, the uh, color will move. So I like natural things to happen when I paint and I don't mind that at all. I don't mind having mistakes. They're just, you know, they make it glorious. It's part, part of the art. Now you sound like you know a lot about different styles. Now do you, do you, teach, do you teach in the world, don't you? Yes, I haven't since I've been here in uh, Tennessee. I've been here about six years. I haven't really delved into that here yet because I've been working with the Arts Councils here and the Arts Council back in um, Virginia I worked for many years too. So I've had a lot of volunteer work in my life. And well, let's see if we can actually get her from the volunteer part of it to actually put in some money in her pocket. That so would be do, nice. That's what I want that. to do. <laughs> I'm going to do that and I think there's an opportunity here with the gallery that we're setting it up so there's actually some teaching opportunities. Would you be inclined to actually do some yes, teaching classes? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so we want to take a look out for that. It will actually put, be putting a schedule up on our board and at the front of the shop down here at 118 Bruce Street. But also you can check out what schedule we're going to have on our gallery10art.com website. So you want to make sure you go there as well. And I'm sure we're going to have some time where you can come in and just meet the artists. So there'll be, I think we're going to try for Tuesdays, afternoons, you know, throughout, you know, whenever. That'd be great. Throughout the summertime, you can come in for a period maybe from between 10 to 2. We'll confirm those times. We can come and meet the artists, talk to the artists, maybe get some insights. And then if you want to do a class, I think there's an opportunity for you to do some class. Was mm -hmm. there anything else, Absolutely. any questions you have or anything else about that? Or? Um, no, I do also some box, some personal artifact box sculptures, which is really interesting. That's something I would definitely be doing with the classes. So if you're interested in that, start keeping and hoarding all your little personal things that you have around the house that may have followed you through your lifetime. Um, little statues, little uh, uh, charms, things like that. and the vases, anything from family that you like to keep, those we'll put into a sculptural box type thing you can hang on the wall and that's a really interesting project. That sounds like fun. a really good idea. Well take a look out for that and for more information, but the main thing is get down here to Gallery 10, downtown Sevierville, right across the street from Gray's Burgers, right next to 2020 Optical. Get your eyes checked first so you can see these beautiful paintings. And just get in here and let's support the local artists. I mean, that's what it's all about, supporting local artists. Yes. By buying their paintings, not just looking at them. Yes. Come down and buy their art, okay? We want to be able to survive by selling our art. That's right. Well, listen, Crystal, it's been fantastic. Look forward to having you in here. Look forward to the classes. I'm sure I will attend one or two or three. <laughs> That'd be okay, cool. Help me out. <laughs> anyway, it's been great. I appreciate it. See, knock it off. See, that wasn't too hard, was it? No. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So there you go.